around my story. I am Avery, 19 years old. I have two sisters, a white and a black girl. Aria is the eldest. She is 20 years old. She is an angel in appearance and character. Everyone loves her. She is always calm and obedient. Mia is our little sister. She is 17 years old. She has a very quarrelsome personality and always gets us into trouble. We always do not agree in anything, especially if it is a place to go out. But this time, it was a little different. Mia agreed on the place where Aria wants to go out since it is Aria's birthday, and she has the right to choose. But of course, it was on the condition that Mia had the right to invite her friends. The day was very nice in the beginning, until Aaron, Aria's boyfriend, arrived. It was the first time that Mia and I saw him. He was young, handsome, and very polite. And although he was the type that Mia did not like, and she was in a relationship with a young man named Aiden, she liked Aaron very much. Aria realized that Mia was trying to get close to Aaron, and she tried to warn her, but Mia didn't care and went on. So Aria got very angry at the time, and it was the first time to see Aria's features full of anger like this, but she had nothing to do. The party and the day ended. Aria decided to leave because Mia took over the place, and Aaron, in order to try to compensate Aria for this birthday, I booked a camping trip with a group of my university friends. Aria refused at first, but was convinced after a while. The strange thing is that when we arrived at the camping site, we found Mia standing with Aaron and they were laughing. I tried to behave at the time and asked Mia to come with me so we could talk, and I told her that she shouldn't act with Aaron in this way, because Aria loves him and she spoils the relationship, but she didn't like my words, and left me and walked and went to Aaron while he was helping Arya to set up her tent. Of course, Arya got very angry, but at the same time, she didn't know what to do. She was talking on the phone, and after a while, I didn't find her. I looked for her a lot, but it was useless. I called her, but her phone was switched off. I was like crazy. I didn't know what to do. And when I told Mia to look for her with me, she didn't care. Aaron started searching with me, but to no avail. She disappeared. And at that time, when I did not know what to do, a number called me, telling me that Aria was in the hospital. She had a major accident while returning to the road. She's unconscious. I took Mia and Aaron and went to the hospital. The strange thing is, is that Mia was not affected. Nor did she even feel that she was the reason for what happened? As if she was happy. I was very upset with her. How insensitive was she? So I took all my anger on her, blaming her that she is the cause of all the problems that happens to us and that her presence among us has become a great burden for us. Mia kept silent until she reached the hospital. We went to see Aria and then I didn't find Mia. Disappeared. I tried to find her, I tried to talk to all her friends, but to no avail. At that time, my father and my mother knew what had happened, and they arrived at the hospital and began to ask about my sisters. I didn't know what to tell them anymore, that my older sister is in a coma, or that my younger sister has disappeared. I broke down and kept crying. I felt guilty, and that the reason for all of this was me who prepared the camping trip, and I was the one who got upset with Mia. I am the reason, and I don't know what to do. I wonder, do you think who is wrong? Me, or Mia, or Aria, who gave up her right so much? This time, you get to know the truth about the haunted piano. I left, I went to work, then I came home and went to bed. Everything was back to normal just as I told myself it was. Music started playing again. That's when it hit me. This was not paranormal. It couldn't be. It was a cheap trick. Margaret must have programmed the piano to play itself. It was just a prank. A laugh at my expense. That's why the damn thing was free. I ran downstairs to solve the mystery once and for all. Like clockwork, as soon as my foot touched the bottom step, 
the piano stopped playing, I walked over to it, confident in my new theory. Upon opening it up and exploring all of it, I was surprised by what I saw. It was just a normal piano. Nothing extra was added in its creation to make it play on its own. My calmness was not calm anymore. I stared at the red wood and ivory keys before me and almost felt compelled to ask, what are you? Instead, I remained silent. This silence, however, was quickly interrupted by the sound of music as the piano began playing itself once again. I wanted to run, but fear kept me still. I watched the horror unfold. The keys were being pressed down hard, controlled by an unseen force. A haunting piece filled the room as pictures fell from the walls. The house began to shake around me. My eyes darted back and forth in fear, but then I noticed something outside. Standing at my window was a shadowy figure. I ran outside to escape the madness. All the while the song went on, the house continued to shake behind me. The dark figure was nowhere to be seen. Margaret has not rigged the piano to play on its own, but I was not losing my marbles either. This was something entirely different, something out of this world. All at once, the music stopped playing and the world around me with it. No wind, no cars, no animals, and no people. Nothing. It was the middle of the night at this point, but where were the crickets, the frogs, or even the trees? Where was life outside my home? A little exploration revealed that I was truly by myself. Every living creature in the world had disappeared. What the hell was going on? Why was this happening? I returned home, hoping for answers, but instead, I saw an unsettling sight. It was so dark, I almost didn't see it. Standing completely still next to the piano was the same silhouette from my window. My body was shaking with fear, but the figure did not react. It was frozen like the rest of the world. The shadow was wearing a dark cloak, one that covered its entire body. At its face was nothing but pure darkness. I studied the figure for a few more moments before a familiar sound filled the room. The piano song played, and in an instant, the world returned to life. I fell to the ground, but managed to escape, crawling out the front door and rushing over to my car. I got in and took off with no specific location in mind, happy to be anywhere that was not my own home. I started weighing my options, destroying the piano came to mind, but the risk outweighed the reward. It could just as easily backfire, angering whatever spirit was haunting its keys. Seeking help wasn't really an option either. The only person who might believe me was Margaret. That was it, Margaret. Maybe she would know what to do. It was late, but I didn't care. I drove over to her place. The dark figure was there, standing at her door. Before I could turn in the opposite direction, it grabbed me by the arm with its bony fingers. Its strength kept me anchored in place, and then it disappeared. I had no choice but to return home. I hesitantly stepped past the piano and walked up to my bedroom, where I locked the door and fell into bed, mentally exhausted. I would not have even a moment of peace. As the song started up again, the second my head hit the pillow, but I remained still, sick of the repetition. The banging on my bedroom door that followed, however, succeeded in freaking me out. I jumped out of bed and pushed my dresser to the door, and I hid under my sheet. The banging persisted, but I chose to instead focus on the song, allowing myself to properly listen to it for the first time. Surprisingly enough, it was beautiful. Dark, but beautiful. Its melody soothed me relaxing me to the point that my eyes grew tired. 
I fell asleep and I had a dream. The dream world I found myself in was different. It was overwhelmingly vivid and real. Words like surreal and otherworldly just don't cut it. The awareness I had is also difficult to explain. I was completely aware of my surroundings in the sense that I could feel everything about them. I know that doesn't make much sense, but it's the only description I have to offer. The dream was in a forest. It was large, and at the center, a large red tree stood tall. Every fiber of my being knew where I was. This was the blood tree, the precursor to my piano. As I admired the beauty of the blood tree, a person stepped out from behind. He did not speak. He simply pointed at the tree. This is when the piano leaked into my dream. The song played as glowing lines ran up and down the tree's bark. The man put his hand to the wood, motioning for me to do the same. And I did. It was an incredible sensation. My eyes were filled with visions, a glimpse into the blood tree's past. Its bark wasn't always red. Native habitats came up to the tree every year. They would slice their hands open and place them on the tree's trunk. Their blood then dripped to its base, representing the lifelines of their people. It also signified becoming one with nature, feeding the tree life from within. It was the anchor that kept their community together. This is where they gathered and enjoyed life. A place free from worry. A safe place. This was also where the natives buried their dead. After that, one of the elders would play a song. The same song my piano played every night. It was their song of death. When it was all over, a final offering of blood was taken from the fallen and painted on the blood tree, granting their spirit safe passage to the afterlife. When the vision stopped, my new friend released his hand from the bark and pulled out an unusual instrument. He began playing the song of death, but then stopped. He handed it to me and motioned for me to play instead. I wasn't sure what he was up to, but felt no need to deny his wishes. With little practice, I was able to get the hang of the instrument and play the song. As I played, the blood tree began wilting, its bark changing from red to black. My friend was ecstatic. For one reason or another, this is what he wanted. It wasn't until I woke up later in bed that the pieces of the puzzle clicked into place. Margaret's grandfather had taken away the native's headstone. He violated their connection to nature, as well as with one another. The tree and its spirits had to be put to rest, and once and for all, there was only one way to do this. I can't explain how, but I knew I needed to play the song of death on the piano. The whole way through, without interruption. It was the only thing that would break the curse. I ran downstairs and put my plan into action. When my hand touched the keys, the house violently shook, knocking frames and furniture all over the place. I kept my composure. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw the dark figure standing at my window again. Still, I continued. I had an obligation to preserve, if not for the tree or its ghost, then for myself. The nightmare had to end. They roamed around the room sometimes next to me, other times breathing down my neck. I paid no attention on the outside, but my bones were shaking. I had come too far to lose my balance now. Just as the shadowy figure sat next to me at the piano, I struck the final note of the song. The madness around me stopped. I turned to the figure beside me, and it was the native for my dream. He threw me a thankful smile before vanishing. My work was done. Months have passed, and the piano remains in my living room, quieter than it's ever been before. I even play it from time to time, 
If there's one thing you can take away from my experience, it's to be mindful of the things that make sounds at night. Try your best not to be frightened, and please let this tale be a warning to you. Don't ever buy strange things from Craigslist, you'll thank me later.